Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this great night, and thank you for coming to Doc NYC. We are so lucky to have many special guests with us tonight for this world premiere screening of Thank You for Your Service. We are also very happy to have a special guest, Phil Donahue, moderating a post-screening discussion. Such a well-rendered, well-edited, noble undertaking. I am, I am so impressed. Nowhere is your own experience and insight more important than your participation in the effort to ensure that future soldiers will have available to them the life or death uh, treatment necessary to cope with post-traumatic stress and kindly give us an estimate or your own best guess as to how we're doing now on that. Do we have a chance? How long do you think it'll take? And uh, do you have an American public sensitive and aware of the enormity of this problem? The things that you saw in this movie are absolutely emblematic of what we need to do to turn the existing mental health system on its head so that everyone who comes back, and families, families serve too, <laughs> are immersed in community engagement, culture and the arts, get the opportunity, trained peer-to-peer -peer intervention, self-regulation skills, get access to the kinds of of holistic mind-body activities that renew and restore the human mind-body spirit. You saw the, the change in the warriors' faces, did you not, in the course of this movie? And then, of course, there will be a need for clinical care. And when we need to navigate that path, we're not alone. It wasn't ignored in the film, but spend just a little more time. I mean, more, more suicides than deaths on the battlefield. This is awfully difficult to get your head around. And we didn't have this after World War II. We didn't have it after Korea. What is going on here? These aren't new problems, and since World War II, neuropsychiatric casualties have outnumbered the total number of people, soldiers killed and wounded in action. And that trend has continued to grow exponentially with the, the modern threats and modern warfare. There's been a blueprint from each generation about what we should be doing as lessons learned, as you saw in the film. And what do we need to do for you know, treatment, for, for you know, staffing, for reintegration? for organization and for dealing with stigma. And these lessons are well documented, they're present, but they're repeatedly ignored. There's never been a congressional hearing to this day about why we have these preventable wartime crises. Why did we ignore the lessons of war? Why were we so grossly unprepared and we did not plan for the obvious? Why do we not hold people accountable for that? And you know, the idea of behavioral health corps which I'm very grateful to Tom and Ian for plugging that in as being kind of a central feature, but don't fool ourselves. Having a behavioral health court in itself is not going to end the cycle of preventable crisis, but it's gonna take a collective effort by all of us from ground up and for Congress to get involved to uh, force a major paradigm shift that we treat mental health in the same way we treat medical care. You talk about moral injury. I'm feeling that the nation is suffering from moral injury and that we're all feeling very guilty about what we're asking young men and women to do in our behalf. And I think your title is very apt. Thank you for your service. We can't wait to say this. It's in a neon sign at LaGuardia Airport. Thank you for your service. Um, God bless our troops is everywhere. Uh, flyovers of baseball games and so on. And I, I, I just wonder if we're talking to ourselves, if we're making ourselves feel better, or 
in a false sense, feeling somehow good about what we're doing for our veterans. Well, I think if the American public really understood, they would come on board to help veterans. But veterans now make up less than 1% of the population, whereas after World War II, 16 million mostly men went out to serve out of 100 million. When they came back, Roosevelt knew, if we don't do something like the GI Bill, if we don't do what we saw in Let There Be Light, there's going to be a lot of issues. That's 16% of the population, 16 times what we deal with now. So now we can kind of forget. We can have a collective amnesia. We can put it over in a box. And now it's harder for us all. With a disappearing middle class, we're all economically struggling. We're trying to raise our kids. And we can barely keep our own lives together. The last thing we want to do is deal with the idea of the kinds of things that these guys have gone through. We don't want to deal with it. So we put our heads in the sand and we make it somebody else's problem. But the reality is it's our problem. And we all have a responsibility to do something about it. What is the status of the film in terms of distribution? Nothing yet. We literally, this is the first time it's been shown to an audience. Mental health is a dragon we haven't slain in the general population. Exactly right, yeah. Forget about military. Well, I believe uh, if you actually can fix it in the military, it helps to fix it in the rest of the country. Uh, absolutely. The military leads be, on a lot of these issues. Uh, you could be the template for what right. would work elsewhere. And so it's we, we should probably wrap it up because I have a feeling... Tom we Tom are. Is We're getting the hook. Filled. I just want to say one last shout out to my partner in Creative Chaos, Steve Edwards, who has been there with us for the last five years. He's standing up in the back. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And he's a co-producer on the film well, as well. Yeah. You gave a talk show host a microphone and now you're telling him to get off? I mean, this is... <clears throat> um, thank you. I know you joined me in uh, celebrating this fabulous achievement and wishing best of luck to all the noble people who worked on this wonderful enterprise. Thank them all. Thank you, Phil. Thank you.